don't make any assumptions. Um, you know, and this is funny because I, I in a way, I'm, I'm going to undercut my own advice because I, I did sort of assume, like, I, I went through this kind of midlife crisis in my early 40s when I, I, I realized that my last PR was in the past. Like, like you know, it, it was devastating to me actually because my PRs just weren't all that good for, to me. They, they weren't good enough, and I, I truly grieved it. Like I, I had, there was, I describe it in the book. It was I ran a half marathon. I was having a little bit. I, I was healthy and I was getting fit again. And I was, I don't know, 43, 42, 43. I, and I went into this half marathon thinking, okay, maybe I've got one last shot to do something good. And I DNF'd. <laughs> I mean, who DNFs a half marathon? But I, I did. And I'm like, it's over. And I just had to face it. And then I was wrong. You know, I, I've, I've set more than one PR, not only after that, but years after that. Um, and and, and some, of the, some, just some, some of the things I've experienced and done you know, at, at you know, past 45, truly exploded my ideas about what's possible and, and what isn't. So, just if you if you think something's impossible, just know that you're you could well be wrong. <laughs> and so, it's best just to assume that uh, you can just keep getting better, and, and you know, eventually you won't keep it. Like everyone sets their last PR at some point but i think if you assume oh i can't get better after a certain age that that can become self-fulfilling um lucky for me it didn't in my case and i don't know why it didn't like i did assume i was done getting better and yet i got better and actually that might relate to my second piece of advice which is don't be afraid to fail like you know when i went to flagstaff to train with these professionals you know, I didn't have as much at stake as they did. You know, their very livelihood depends on their ability to stay healthy and perform. But there was a lot at stake for me too. Like, you know, it wasn't just me, but like I don't have children, but my wife and my dog came with me. You know, I uprooted our, our whole small family for an entire summer. Um, you know, it was risky financially. Um, and yes, you know, I did want to produce a book out of this and, if I just got injured and wasn't even able to start the Chicago letter marathon, or if I just bombed it and there's no way I could tell a story with a happy ending, like it would have been in a sense all for, for not, at least, you know, from a business perspective, but you know, I was willing to take that risk. And I was also, you know, I did a blog while I was there, which got some traction. There were a lot of middle-aged runners out there just, they wanted me to succeed for what it might mean for them. So I was, when I ran Chicago, I was highly conscious of that, like that weight on my shoulders, but, but I, I was okay with it because, you know, I actually, I wouldn't have done as well as I did without that pressure. Yeah. So, you know, I, I fail a lot. You know, Sarah Crouch, one of the, the, she wasn't a member of the team, but she's a professional runner who I befriended in Flagstaff. While I was there. She kind of, I mean, she was, 17 years younger than me, <laughs> or at least uh, close to 20 years younger than me. And, and she was like, she took me under her wing. But one of the things she told me is, uh, you know, if you, if you achieve your goals more than 50% of the time, you need to raise the bar. And, and so it's okay to fail. Like, you know, the best athletes fail a lot because they're setting a high bar but setting a high bar is actually also what makes them the best athletes. So failure is just, yeah. failure is not even really failure. Like, but the, I, I am aware just from being a coach that there are a lot of athletes out there who are deathly afraid of failure so that they won't take risks. Yeah. Um, so, you know, the way to get over that is just, I, I think to take a crazy risk. It, I've got a sort of a sequel to How Bad You Want It coming out in December called The Comeback Quotient. And one thing I advise or I suggest that athletes do who want to like become more, less, less risk averse is do like uh, Elliot Kipchoge did with this sub two hour marathon attempt. Like, you know, he had about maybe a 10% chance of doing that and, and he did it. And he put it, put it out. <laughs> There's no so going back. So go ahead. Like it doesn't have to be a marathon, but just like as an exercise, just pick a goal that you 
honestly think you have about a 10% chance of achieving and then go for it. And, and then you probably, there's a 90% lo- like if you if approach it lo- logically, and I truly mean this mathematically, 10% chance, like you will almost certainly fail and you'll see it's okay. <laughs> it, it didn't kill you and you won't regret the experience and you will probably also have a great performance that just happens to fall short of your moonshot goal. Um, so that can help a lot too.